picked mm-hmm. up a pair of clippers. Um, a friend of mine brought them to me. I, I tell the story all the time. Mm-hmm. Even when I see him, I'm like, yo, if it wasn't for you, his name is Robbie Bolden. Um, if it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be cutting hair. But he brought the clippers to me. We started cutting the neighborhood uh, kids' hair. Uh, the thing about that is that I knew they couldn't afford haircuts because, you mm-hmm. know, I, I was one of those kids that couldn't afford a haircut. So we picking up the clippers and cutting the neighborhood kids and becoming the neighborhood barbers was a good thing to you know help benefit the kids that couldn't afford the haircuts. And also to learn a skill that uh, actually what I found out later that builds character. Like it's nothing like being a barber. It's it's a it's a different type of a career and craft. Um, you get to meet so many walks of life. Um, so again, we we grew, I grew up cutting uh, kids hair around the neighborhood, uh, and then eventually I um, wanted to get out the house. Not just wanted to get out the house. My mom wanted me out of the house because I became so popular. You know, there's a lot of kids in the projects. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of kids to cut. And after all, the kids coming to your house. Mom, I know you're doing good. I know you're not out in the streets, but you got too many kids in this house. And I started cutting outside, um, in the kitchen, top of the stairs, bedroom. You know, anywhere in the house until I just, you know, burst out the seams and say, you know what, time for me to go ahead to the to a barbershop. So and here I am in the barbershop, um, becoming the owner, you know. Yeah. Um, I, st- I started working at other people's shop, Mr. B's shop, uh, Styles on the Ave. Um, and that was in around t- 2001, two maybe. Um, didn't open my first shop until 2004. That was like a pretty fast progression of like cutting kids' hair, shop, and then you own your own shop. Yeah. Um, so what, how did you get to the the point where you had enough, I guess, clientele and people supporting you that you could open your own shop? You know, just like I was saying um, earlier and um, pretty much off camera is that if you're good, people will tell somebody. So which makes the word of mouth the most, um, I could say the most, uh, the best way to get your word out there if you're good in what you're doing, um, word of mouth. But if you're bad, then they're going to tell everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good. If you're good, they're going to tell somebody. If you're bad... They're going to tell everybody. Um, it just happened. I wanted to cut hair, and I really enjoy cutting hair. Like, I, I even to this day, um, on my way, I always say I'm in the fourth quarter on my way out of the uh, business because I own other businesses. Uh, and, you know, it's like being in the fourth quarter, I still feel like I love cutting hair, uh, and, I, and, I, and I really enjoy it. Uh, it it's, like, it's like no other craft, you know what I mean? So... I just remember, um, you know, cutting in the house and one time I just realized that I was making money. Mm -hmm. I was in high school and I felt like, you know what? I can keep doing this. You know what I mean? So it started progressing like that and to the point where I started working in a shop and then eventually owning a shop. You know, I mean, when you got one place for a long time under someone else's roof, you know, you had the potential to run a business or own a business or you have that leadership skill eventually you're going to want your own. And that's what happened. I didn't end up wanting my own shop and I started working into, um, my first shop was called Sharp Town. Um, and I started, you know, delegating people to come, you know, uh, and my clientele just started building. It just started building after that. Um, I went from cutting maybe like five or six years a day to maybe 25 years a day. Whoa. At one time I was doing a hundred years a week. So a hundred years a week. So 20, and I was working four or five days. Um, if I were, and then I narrowed it down to four days and I was doing 25 to 27 years a day. So by the time I, Cut Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's what my days. I was working four days, twenty five hits a day, twenty seven hits. So I was hitting a hundred. That was my goal, a hundred hits a week. And I actually hit that like soon. You know, once I decided that's what I was going to do, it turned into that. So I was doing a hundred hits a week. Wow, how many hours is that? Like per day. 25? To do a hundred, to do a hundred um, clients a week. Uh, you would have to work probably from seven to at least six. So mm-hmm. the way I would come in at seven o'clock and at one time I was coming at work at nine o'clock and then I ran into a, a, a mentor who said, you know, you got to come a little earlier, the early bird, you know, early bird gets the worm and all that stuff. And I realized that what I was charging that if I just come in a half hour earlier, you, you know, times that by four and then you times it by what that would look like in a month. I mean, if you do that, if you just come in half an hour earlier charging $25, well, that's an extra hundred dollars right there, just because you became a, just because you came to the shop a half an hour earlier. You know, you came eight o'clock, you come seven thirty. That's another twenty. I was charging twenty five dollars at the time. That was mm-hmm. years ago. Um, yeah, we, year years ago. So <laughs> it's a long time from that. Um, so if I did that, it would turn into a hundred dollars a week just to come a half an hour early. And if you times that by four weeks, you have four hundred dollars. So I said. We ain't going to just come a half hour early. We're going to come much earlier. So I started coming at 7 a.m. So to answer your question, from 7 to 6 is how you pretty much can get 
20 something years. I'm a very fast cutter, very, and every, I'm known for that. Um, I had booked my clients every half an hour, 7, 7.30, 8, 8.30, 9, 9.30, 10, 10, 30. Once you get to, and I got it down, once you get to like four o'clock, you already hit you like 18 to 20 mark. So yeah. from four o'clock to six, you're going to cover it to five or six hits. Yeah. So I had it down to a science, you know what I mean? Where I, where I knew I was going to do 25 to 27 hits a day. So that's what I was doing. And I, that's how it easy hit 100 hits. Dang. So he was basically, you were basically keeping your KPIs. Yes. You, know? you just yeah. knew your numbers. I knew my numbers. I knew the numbers. And I'm telling you, once again, I was coming in, I believe it was 9 o'clock. I was coming in 9 o'clock. And then I started backing up to 8.30, to 8 o'clock, to 7.30, to 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 7 o'clock. And I was seeing the, the money, you know what I mean? One, one half an hour would change my money. And if I had a car payment or something like that, I had to come a half an hour earlier. And if I had a car payment to pay, pay that, you know, I don't know if people have $400 car payments back then. I'm sure it's the norm now, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember doing that and, you know, um, and it worked out, you know, it worked out yeah. for me. And I had a goal to be able to do 100 hits in, in one day.